How do you remove a wall in a property legally and correctly? It sounds like it's a simple process and so many people message me all the time saying that they have problems when they come to selling the house or refinancing because they don't have certain things in place. Structural reports, sign off by building inspectors, lots and lots of things that are done incorrectly by people that don't know what they're doing. So this video, step-by-step -step guide, how to remove a wall correctly. So guys, step one, how do I remove this wall safely, legally and correctly? The first thing that I do is instruct a structural engineer to come along and give me drawings of what steel is needed to hold the weight above in place. Structural engineers are key. First step, they will advise you what you can and can't do. Step two, the structural engineer will attend the property. He will take some measurements and he will get the drawings ready for you with the correct calculations of what steels are needed. He will then send them to you on an email and you will present them to your contractor. Your contractor will then take a look at them and he will order the steels in preparation for when the walls are removed. Step three. Your contractor will remove the walls and prop them ready for when the steels are ordered. Prop the wall. I bet at this exact moment you're wondering what is prop the wall? Well, it's where you get some acros, also known as jack posts, and they support above in temporary preparation for the steel to be fitted. Once the steel's fitted and the pad stones are in place, well, the jack posts or the acros get removed. At this stage, your builder will do a site measurement. He will measure the size of the steel that is needed. Even though it's on the drawing, most builders and most fabricators still want confirmation from the builder of the exact length of the steel. So your builder will do that, order it, and then it will be delivered. But you're ready to get your steel in. Step four, guys, the steel has now been fitted and your builder has successfully remove the wall. There are no acros holding the steel in place either, but if you look up here, you can see a different color block compared to the bricks below it. That's called a pad stone. When you receive your structural engineer's drawing, you will receive what pad stone is needed to support the steel above it. There are different types of pad stones that support different weights. boarding, the steels are in, they've been boarded, they're getting ready for plastering, but before this, a building inspector will come along and sign off on the building regulations. This is very important guys, this is something that a lot of people overlook, getting the work signed off legally. Also, you don't have to use the local council's building inspectors. You can go out and get your own. There are private ones out there that can sign it off and give you the paperwork that is needed. So make sure you know this and you use this to your advantage because councils can book you in a week or two weeks, say they're busy and they've got a lot going on. A private firm will come out quicker and usually what we find is they're way more active in helping you guys move forward. Step six, plastering, painting, and you have a finished product where the wall has been knocked out it has been supported correctly with the steels, the pad stones are in place, you have the structural engineer's report, you have the building inspector sign off, you have a wall demolished to create a beautiful open space, which is something I love. There you have it guys, that is how you remove a wall legally and successfully. This will help when it comes to refinancing or selling the property. So your solicitor, when they ask you, do you have the structural engineer's reports? Do you have the building regulation sign offs? You can say, yes, I do. It was all done correctly. Guys, if you like this video, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, and stick around for a lot more education videos in 2023.